Is she your favorite coach at LSU? No. No. Second? I'm like, who is this kid? You two seem to really enjoy each other. Do you? Yeah. yeah. How'd that feel? You did it right. Maggie's at her best when she's being Maggie. Hey, hey. Look, get in the back. <laughs> All right. How we doing, guys? Good, you? Oh, doing great. Want to go for a ride? This is LSU, huh? This is. Let's do Ready? it. Yeah. Maggie, there aren't many people from London, Ontario, who end up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. You may even be the first. Who knows? What really went into the decision here? Was it Rick? Was it the opportunity of what the program was? Take us kind of through that decision making for yourself. Yeah, I never thought I would end up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, spending four years at Michigan was basically like being in Canada, so it was definitely a big change, kind of getting used to the culture and the temperature and everything else down here, but it's been a really great adjustment, and I think it was nice to get away from things that I was comfortable doing and kind of get out of my comfort zone a little bit. As far as making the decision to come down here, I think it was purely made on the decision because my coach from Michigan had come down here and just wanted to kind of rekindle that relationship. And I know that he knows me as well as I know myself. So being around that, and I knew his training worked for me well, as well as his personality. So that was something else that I was looking forward to getting back with. Like now, your hand pushes down, the elbows up. Now when you initiate the pull, you initiate with the fingertips. If you don't initiate with the fingertips to push down like this, the ball slides off. So here, and you get all the way through. What makes you two click? What is it about this relationship that kind of works? Honestly, we're really good at communicating with each other, and I think that's the first thing about a coaching-athlete relationship. We have this very similar sense of humor, um, very funny, but we both can also put that aside and get the work done when we need to, and he's been able to give me goal times in practice, and. I can go the exact time to the 100 sometimes. So we're super in tune with swimming, and he's a swim nerd like I am too, so we can always chat about those things. You told me that if we came to Baton Rouge, we had to come here. Why? Like, what? Like what is this? This is one of the scenes in the very first Pitch Perfect movie, which I have seen countless times. It was like a movie that was playing when I was growing up. What do you remember when you first met a teenage Maggie McNeil. That was a lot of fun. We, we both joke about that meeting a lot. Um, she came down, she drove down from London, and we met at my office. And she came down with her mom, and her mom's asking all these questions about school, about swimming, and Maggie's sitting there slumped down in the chair, arms crossed, just kind of giving me one of these. I'm like, who is this kid? It's really interesting, because so often a coach-athlete relationship is coach tells athlete what to do, athlete follows what's on the chalkboard, rinse, repeat, away we go. Seems like it's a little different here. I mean, we started out that way. Yeah. You started when you were a freshman. Yeah, back in the, in the good old days. How did it evolve? You know, I think that part of it for me is learning to listen to people and, and listening to Maggie. I mean, she has some opinions on some things, and she's had some great ideas over time about things that we could do to, to help her to be a better athlete. And she's grown as a person and her communication. And um, yeah, no, it's just you've learned to speak a little bit more. Were you thinking or not thinking, or what was... I was just spinning. What have you gotten to know about her? You know, she's an amazing person in a lot of ways. She's exceptionally bright. She even told me one time, you only have to tell me something once, and then she'll remember it and she'll do it. She's incredibly driven. She's hardworking. She's all the things you want in an athlete. So two months ago, what are the points of emphasis? What are the real focuses you guys kind of narrow in on, on Paris? We've been preparing for Paris for a while, so we're feeling good about ourselves. We're coming back, we're racing, we're doing good. Come on, come on! Maggie's at her best when she's being Maggie, and in, in when she's being unfiltered, giving back to people, having fun. <laughs> when that moment hits for competition, she's very different, it's very tense, it's, it's a lot of pressure. But when she's in a daily practice, she loves to race, and she wants to race people. There are very few women in the world that I've ever seen practice as fast as her. I want him. He's going to try and beat you. Did you make him switch? Yeah, no, I did make him switch. All right, here we go. All right, let's go. How much do you think this decision is going to help you this summer? 100%. And I think I've seen great changes and progress in myself as a person and as a swimmer since I've come down here in the few short years that I've been here, but 
It's been a great ride and I think it was the best decision that I could have made. At a certain point in time we realized what this is about. You know, you started doing this as a little kid and as you continue to roll through the sport, oftentimes that gets lost. The sponsors and professionalism. But I think when they go up, the last thing maybe that they should hear is to remember, go have fun. Enjoy the moment. You two seem to really enjoy each other. Do you? Yeah. I think you have to create a partnership with your athletes. When they're younger kids, this concept of the coach telling the athlete what they have to do, okay, that works. They don't necessarily know. You have to bring them in and get them to start to understand where you want to be, where you think they need to be. I still tell her what to do sometimes. Uh, she'll still push back, but I think that relationship that, that I trust that she's going to do the things that we need to do to be successful and that I'm going to ask her to not do anything that she shouldn't be doing or she doesn't need to be doing. One more time. That was good. That was interesting because you definitely have to get over those balls to push it back. Otherwise, they're going to pop right here at your ribs. Have you thought at all about, man, this is going to be my last Olympics, or do you not take your head there? Um, I mean, I know it's going to be because like, I'm not going to do LA, but I'm definitely just going to enjoy it and not focus too much on when I'm going to be done swimming and, and kind of have that mentality. A successful Paris for me, I think, I don't want to focus just on medals, and I think that's how society views the Olympics, and I think it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. The Olympics experience is something unlike anything else, and being in a village atmosphere is, is something that's really hard to explain to other people, and I've tried to explain it to my parents before, but if you're not there, it's really, it really is quite unique because athletes in the best of their sports are all over the world are living together in a little perfect society, and it's just an incredible thing to be a part of. So we're back at the net. Thanks, Suresh, for coming to visit me here. Great to see you, Maggie. I got you a little something oh. to remember your time here. <laughs> LSU, huh? Yeah. For my boy, Justin Jefferson. Go Tigers. I will uh, see you in Paris. Yeah, see you in Paris. I appreciate you. Thanks so much. All right.